Okay, geometry 3.2, parallel lines and transversal. Notice the word use instead of identify. I can use the properties of parallel lines. I can prove, our proof is coming, be patient with this, okay? I will practice so much with you, and you'll see patterns after a while. And I can solve real life problems. Okay, now you'll see some markings on here because um, I've already done this video and I realized I forgot to turn it on. So, use your ruler. So I took a ruler and I drew a set of parallel lines. So I drew a line above and below the ruler. And then I drew a transversal. I purposely didn't make the transversal perpendicular. Label the angles one through eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then trace your drawing onto tracing paper. Okay, so look at that. I put the exact same thing on there. Okay? Um, word about tracing paper is I used a Sharpie, and tracing paper works best with Sharpie or pencil, not a pen. I'm not sure why. Okay, so now move the tracing paper so that angle 1 is positioned over angle 5. So I'm going to take this tracing paper and slide it down. And what do you notice? 1 and 5 are the exact same angle. And then I'm also going to turn it around. 1 and 4 are the same angle. 1 and 8 are the same angle. So that's why I put the arcs there. These angles are always going to be congruent. Let's see why. Angle 1 and 5 are corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are congruent. Yes, I abbreviated R. Don't make fun of me. No judging. And then angle 1 and 4. I should put angle 1 and angle 5. Vertical angles, angle 1 and 4. Those are congruent, okay? So they make that V. So therefore, 5 and 8 are also congruent. Alternate interior angles are congruent. So that would be 4 and 5. And look at this. Alternate exterior, 1 and 8, are congruent. So are the angles congruent? Some. And then compare the eight angles and list the congruent pairs. All right, so angles 1, 4, 5, 8 are congruent. Therefore, angles 2, 3, 6, 7 are congruent. OK, so I will tape that on there later. That goes to our first postulate, number 15, or first postulate for the section, corresponding angles. If two lines are cut by transversal, then the pairs of Corresponding angles are congruent. Now notice, we were working with any two lines before. Now we're dealing with parallel lines. So this is important. So in the other sections, if the lines weren't parallel, you couldn't say that these two angles, or these two, these two, or these two are congruent. They must be parallel lines, OK? So if you have parallel lines, then corresponding angles are congruent for the if-then statement, OK? So the parallel is really important. Now I noticed that some of these were hard to see because um, but the picture I have is in color and these, they use light colors. So this is like in yellow and I wrote over them. Example one. Okay, the measure of the three lettered angles is of three of the lettered angles is 65. Identify the angles and explain your reasoning. All right, so we have 65 degrees. That's this angle right here. So what other three angles are going to be congruent to that? Well, angle D. OK, why? Because they're vertical angles. OK, and then 65 and E. I think that's the letter E. Um, those are called corresponding angles. Or you could say D and E because they're alternate interior. And then 65 and H. So if I look at these two, those are alternate exterior angles. So far, so good? OK. So they really didn't want me to use this right here. They wanted me to use these because we know vertical, and we know corresponding, and this would also be vertical. So, but. That's OK. I just want to get ready for that. That's why. Next page. Slide this paper down. And we are on theorem 3.1, alternate interior angles theorem. If two 
parallel lines are cut by transversal, then the pairs of alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so that would be these two angles. Notice we're starting with the parallel lines. Can you see that? I know it printed off nice, but it's just not showing the video. So you start if you have parallel lines. Then angle four is congruent to angle six. Why? Alternate interior angles are congruent. Now I know you keep wondering why does why do I always put the reason why? Because you will have to do that in a proof. So theorem 3.2 alternate exterior angles theorem. If two line uh, parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the okay notice we're starting with parallel lines again. Then the pair of alternate exterior are congruent. So that would be angles one and angle eight. So we're starting with if you have parallel lines. Line, yes, okay, there goes my spelling. Then angle one is congruent to angle eight. And then, of course, 3.3, .3, very similar. Okay, you can't see these lines at all. Let's somehow change that. Okay. Um, consecutive interior. So if you have parallel lines, that would be this angle and this angle. Okay. Um, let's see if I can make it better on the video. Okay, so these are my two parallel lines cut by transversal. These, this one dot and the two dots, are my same side or consecutive interior. Okay, they are supplementary. Ah, not congruent. Okay, so that's angle A and angle B. So if you have parallel lines, you have to have that first. Then angle A plus angle B is equal to 180. Okay, remember another word for consecutive interior would be same side interior. So far so good. Now let's use this information. Okay, I totally apologize. Um, I found this problem on the internet and when I worked it out they made a mistake. They had 70 here so hopefully it's corrected on your page. It's a 20. And they also had 2x here and it's supposed to be 12x. Okay, so find the value of x and y. Well let's see here. Let's work with these two first. Um, these arrows tell me the lines are parallel so I know that. If I didn't know the lines are parallel, I couldn't proceed. Okay, so these are same side interior. What does that tell me? That means they add up to 180. So I'm going to add these up. 3y plus 5 plus 5y plus 15 is equal to 180. Combine like terms. 8y plus 20 is equal to 180. I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. 8y is equal to 160, then divide by 8. y is equal to 20. Okay, so if I know y is 20, I'm going to substitute that in. 3 times 20 plus 5 is 65. Now, because these are vertical angles, I know this is 65 also. So, your vertical angles, 17x minus 20 is equal to 65. So I'm going to add 20 to both sides. Divide by 17. Okay, and then also I'm going to check here. Alternate exterior, they should be congruent. 17x minus 20 should equal 12x plus 5. Let's get x's on one side, numbers on the other. So I'm going to subtract the 12x on both sides. I'll have 5x minus 20 is equal to 5. I'm going to add 20 to both sides. 5x equals 25, x equals 5. So that checks. So we have x is 5 and y is 20. Okay, you ready for the proof? Here it comes. Alrighty. So, given k is parallel to l. Okay, so this is K and that is L. They're parallel. I'm gonna put little angles or little parallel lines there. And what we're gonna do is prove that if you have parallel lines cut by transversal, then exterior angles on the same side, okay, 
uh, of the transversal supplementary. So that could be like angle one and angle six are the add up to 180, or angle four and angle seven add up to 180. Okay. So here we go. And they want us to do angles. Uh oh, it's supposed to be one and six. Silly me. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna draw a line right here. Statement one. Always put what you're given. K is parallel to L. Why? They gave it to us. Given. Okay, so what can you tell me about that? Well, I know that angle one and angle two are equal to 180 degrees. Okay, that's those two angles. Why? Angle one plus angle two is equal to 180 because they're a linear pair. Linear pair make supplementary angles. So linear pair postulate. Now number three. I know that angle two and angle six are congruent. Why? Angle two is congruent to angle six. Well, the lines are parallel. And what are those two angles called? Corresponding angles. corresponding angles postulate. Okay, now if the angles are congruent, then I know their measures are the same. This is one of the steps that I've always hated doing. To me it was always obvious. Um, so the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle six. Definition of congruent angles. Definition of congruent angle says congruent angles have the same measure. Okay, now watch this. Let's see if you can figure out what I'm doing here. Measure of angle one plus the measure of angle six is equal to 180. Look at this. Measure of angle one plus two is 180. I know that two is congruent to, or two is equal to angle six, so then I put one plus six equals 180. I substitute it in, okay? So I substituted that in for two, sorry, six in for two. Substitution. Now, that's what I have right here. One and six, these are outside the parallel lines and they're on the same side. Angles, and that's what we're trying to prove. One and angle six are supplementary. Supplementary angles equal 180. Definition of supplementary angles. There it is. That's a proof. I get it. It's hard. But if you can follow it for now, then I'm really happy. All right, now let's just use this information. So here is a bad version of uh, balance scales that I tried to draw here. I have angle one and angle two. So the figure shows balance scales. Measure of angle one is 70. What is the measure of angle two? Well, your balance scales, basically those should be parallel, these two lines right here, cut by this transversal. Okay, that's this line. So this is angle one, this is angle two. This is 70 degrees. Well, angle one plus angle two is equal to 180. Those are same side interior or consecutive interior. So then I have 70 plus the measure of angle two is equal to 180. Subtract 70 on both sides. The measure of angle two is equal to 110 degrees. Okay, remember these are same side interior, which is the same as consecutive. Consecutive interior. Okay, so um, most of your life will be using the information from proofs. There's your assignment. There's our standard. Have a very nice rainy day.